Welcome to Happy Clubhouse with a review of the Bandai Real Grade 1144 Wing Gundam, which took many fans by surprise when it was announced as the next RG kit. And they were more surprised when Bandai showed us some more very esoteric new additions like the new opening wings and that thing that's a more literal take on the name Bird Mode. But Bird Mode or not, everyone is curious whenever a new RG kit comes out, so we're gonna take a look at Bandai's efforts in this box. The RG Wing Gundam was released on June 19, 2021 for a price of 3,520 yen, so it's about twice as the HG kit. The box art has two credits to it, with the CG art attributed to Koji Ito, and then the artwork was finished up by Akatuki Art. The box measures 31 by 20 by 9 centimeters, and it's a little thicker than some RG boxes. The short side of the box has the same artwork and it tells us that this is already the 35th RG release, though that number also includes a number of recolored kits and like a billion Zakus. The other short side has the actual bird mode. See Bandai, look how confusing you made this. Anyway, all the info here is otherwise the same. The long side here has a lot to boast about from the mechanical gimmicks to the color accuracy out of the box. And this other side has some handsome poses showing you how nice it can look, and then it's all legal text. Inside the box, we get the Wing Gundam spread across 16 runners, with the first 10 of them right here. And then we have the other 6 right here, with one of them being the Beam Saber Blades. This time around, we only get this tiny pre-molded frame, so continuing the trend started with the Xeong, Bandai really has all but phased out the advanced MS joint parts. And just as well, because they've been the cause of slipping RG joints as these kids age. So good on you, Bandai. Even though you symbolically still have these two right here, so technically you don't have to say that it was all a mistake. And then we have a big sheet of clear stickers, and to go through just a few notable ones, we have the eye stickers here, which comes as these two separate ones here, and they go with this black backing. And we have this one that's all just one sticker. And then we have this circle that's with a sensor on the chest, and then this one that goes onto the front camera, and then this one that goes onto the back camera, and then this one's for the sensor on the buster rifle. Then this big V is for the front of the shield. These cool model numbers go onto the side of the wings for each wing. The instructions come as a big staple booklet with the back page dedicated entirely to a detailed sticker guide that goes with the color guide on the bottom of the page. Then we get the usual RG layout with this part here with some background on the wing gun name. And then this part here about the bird mode, which they don't have in English. Then this last part here about the weapons, which also isn't in English. But otherwise, it's all assembly instructions. So of course the Wing Gun name also has a full inner frame, and the frame used here is entirely new, so it doesn't reuse anything from the EW version nor the Wing Gun Dam Zero Custom. The frame itself doesn't have crazy sliding parts, which is also to say the Wing Gun name itself doesn't have complex shifting outer armor. It's all fairly straightforward, and it's not to say it's primitive, but much of the complication you see right here is actually just cutouts and holes to mount the outer armor, and it's really not too hard to see exactly which parts give it its articulation. The frame we get here stays in its own lane, it takes care of articulation, and it takes care of the beautiful grey details that's going to peek out of the outer armor, and that's about it. And here's a quick look at it next to the entry grade RX-78 and the Demure HGF-91, just to give you an idea of exactly how big it is. But let's move on and get all the outer armor put onto this. And here's the frame dressed up into the Wing Gundam, and here we can better appreciate just how much of the frame is used for all the great details that's all around the Wing Gundam. This is something we expect from the RG line, and here it's done as well as always, like on the lower torso here, which if we bring in the high green wing Gundam, we can really see the world of difference all that detail makes. But let's not jump too far ahead just yet, we're gonna see this HG kit again later. The circles on the shoulders here look great with the grey detail, and the machine cannons on the shoulders are done in grey as well, and the vents here are, of course, grey. Which to the HG kit's credit, it is also color separated in that darker blue, and if we take the head apart, we can also see the detailed color separation that gets us the grey Vulcans on the head, with the clear eyes and the head cameras on the front and the back. I know it's nothing that groundbreaking for an RG kit, but we may have been a little bit spoiled by how intricate all these kits are. I mean, this is the sort of stuff we pay all that extra money for. 
And while we're on the topic of colors, the white is done in two tones, uh, as is tradition for RG kits, with this off-white being the main color that we mostly see, and then this minty cool blue being the highlight color. It's quite understated on the Wing Gundam, and we really only get this clashing double tone here on the leg and nowhere else. The shoulder is in the mint blue, but it sits all by itself. One more thing about the colors is the blue right here. The HG kit has a more TV accurate deep dark blue, and the RG kit has a new sky blue. If you look at it by itself, it looks just fine and you're never going to notice anything wrong with the Wing Gundam. But side by side with the HG, you'll really notice how different the two colors are, and you're going to have to be the one to decide which one you like better. Now something else people have been talking about a ton online are the proportions of the kit, and it's not everyone's cup of tea. So here we can see it's not just a matter of the proportions, I mean look how tall the RG kit is. The HG kit was already taller than it should be at 1144 scale, and the RG breaks that even more. And actually if you look closer, the proportions aren't that radically different beyond the height, so what's going on? In truth, Bandai really only made one major adjustment here, the legs. So you see how much longer they are? And more specifically, it's the thighs that have been extended. And actually, this is a really popular modification that a lot of custom builders do, so the RG kit is basically baking this style of mod right into the kit. But also, some people have been saying that they don't like the quote, tiny arms. But I'm here to tell you that the arms aren't actually smaller, and this is the fault of those new legs, because if we adjust the height of the HG kit a little bit, hey look at that, the arms are actually basically the same length. So at least now you have a better idea why the RG looks different, and you can better judge which side of the fence you sit on, and I'm staying away from that can of worms. Another change related to size is the RG's bigger head, which bucks the trend of smaller and smaller heads, and this gives more room for sculpting all those details and having all that color separation on it. It does contribute a bit to the change in proportions, but it's not nearly as much as the legs. And since we're comparing sizes, let's look at the new wings next to the HG ones here. And in this case, they've really been made much bigger. You'd never think the HG wings were small, but they do feel tiny once they're side by side like this. The sides of the RG wings go nicely with the abundance of lines and how it's now cut up into so many more pieces here, so I'd say the RG wings justify its larger size. And if we do the TV style opening of the wing, the new ones swing out much wider, and that works with the bigger size to make it way more expressive, and it draws much more attention. And you know, we kind of expect that with RG kits, but this gives you an idea of how this kit just isn't afraid to show itself off on your shelf. One small complaint here of the wing is that bad fitting right here that leaves a gap between the yellow and the white sections, and these don't open up so there's really no reason why there is this gap. RG kits are sold to us as top of the line, so they will be scrutinized that way, and this doesn't pass muster Bandai. And moving along to the next part of the wings, the RG kit adds its own original flair where these wings fan out even more. So to do that, we need to swing up this top section even further up. And we can see this little dimple here that works with the bump on this opposite side, and then that locks them together nicely when they close. Also, this side has a lot of pushpin marks all over it, which is a little bit unfortunate. And back to the transformation. This lower white part can split into two, and the red part underneath can also split the same way. And once you adjust the space in between the wing sections a little bit, we have the wing in this new fanned out form. Before we put them back on, check out how big they are. They're taller than the actual Wing Gundam itself, even with this new increased height. Now it's hard to say if this is something that's going to catch on and become a permanent part of the Wing Gundam. Online opinions are certainly divided, just like so much about this kit. Some people say that this is a creative remix and the kind of shakeup that we often see in the RG line, and I think that's true. But here, I also get the feeling that the designers didn't think the original wings were cool enough, and in their process of making them more cool, they just outright replaced the old wings with their own entirely new ones, and that's what rubs many fans the wrong way. It really does alter the character of the Wing Gundam a whole lot, and some people find that a little bit overindulgent and also a little bit irreverent to the original TV design. And like I said before, the outer armor doesn't shift and slide like many other RG kits do, and this is mostly a what you see is what you get kit without too many hidden surprises. And actually there are some other omissions too, like the lack of an opening cockpit door which is supposed to be right here. 
This is the first for RG kits, and even though it doesn't bother me a whole lot, I do wonder if this is just a quirk of this particular kit, or if the entire RG line is going to go in this direction in the future. And we also don't get a pilot figure, though you've already gotten two chances to get Hero in other RG kits. And does anyone really care about these little figures? I mean, drop a line in a comment if you really do like them, I'd like to know if there's actually anyone who does. But yes, the common theme here seems to be simplification. This is the RG kit with the least complex inner structure, and they've made a design choice to keep the hyper-detailed appearance, but omit most of the moving parts on the inside. And I've yet to see reviewers point this out, and maybe the glitz and glamour of the appearance outside obscures the fact of the lacking inner mechanics quite well. But if you're a super fan of the RG line, do consider if this is going to affect your opinion of this kit and your purchasing decision. A small footnote here is the new hood they added to the back of the legs, which I think makes it look much more sensible than the original look where they just left the thruster parts exposed like they ran out of time to finish covering that part, so this here at least is a nice addition. For weapons, we get the Wing Gundam's signature buster rifle that's long and punchy. And this is where the RG budget flexes its muscles with the two colors used here with that grey body wrapped around the black inner frame of the gun. And it's also got that yellow piece on the bottom of course, so no stickers here. And then we even get a clear green piece for the aiming sensor up here. The HG rifle may be just as long as the RG1, but the HG budget just doesn't have room for all the details on a weapon like this. The Buster rifle just looks beautiful in a way no other wing Gundam kit does. And you can pull the gun apart like this, and that lets you take out one of the three energy cartridges. Each one has a notch on it, so when you put it back in, they'll always be in the right orientation. The backside has short pegs that lock onto the cartridges, and you keep them in place when you close the gun back up. The notch cutout on the handle works with the trigger finger hands as slit, and you get a gun that's gripped tightly even though it's really big and really long. If you liked the Buster Rifle before, you're gonna love this version of it, and it's never looked better than this. Next, we have the custom shield here, which I can talk about how detail is all day long, but the best way is to invite the HG kit in once again to really help us understand how much detail an RG kit adds to a design. Just like the Buster Rifle, HG kits really just can't afford this many parts separation and color separation on their accessories, so the RG Wing Gundam is still very much an indulgence here. The back side is beautiful with an entire grey inner layer with full mechanical details. You can see the layer of materials that make up this thick shield, and the details give us so much more information about the shield itself. The tip here has a clear green piece for the sensor of the bird mode which pretends to be a cockpit windshield. And perhaps the best part of the shield is this opening mechanism which pushes the beam saber handle outwards. I mean this is just spectacular and it makes the shield so perfect. To connect the shield, you flip out this piece right here that has a rectangular peg on it. Then you connect that peg onto the back of the forearm, and that gives you a shield that you can rotate like this, or adjust like this. And it stays on great, and it's gonna have no trouble staying in place no matter how you pose this kit. So here's the beam saber handle we just saw, taken out of the shield. It's a bit on the small side, but it has to be to fit inside the shield. And it takes one of the two green beam saber blades to make the wing gun names as beam saber. This handle has a cutout that works with the slit on the holding hand to anchor it nice and tight, so there's not going to be any slipping or any wobbling at all right here. Okay, so in the HG review, I made fun of the bird mode for being a lame idea that Bandai tried their best with a silly design, and the RG also tries the best it can. So to transform, you need to rotate the head of the wing gun name to the back like this. And then you lift up the upper torso a little bit, and then rotate the entire two halves to the back like this. Then you pull the shoulder armor outwards like this, which gives you the clearance to flip them downwards. You'll then need to pull out the fists, and then you open up the back of the forearms to allow this wrist portion with the bird claws to rotate forward like this, before you close the forearms back up to lock everything in place. Next, you need to swing the legs back a little first, which gives you the space to open up this hatch here on the knee, which allows you to fold the legs up like this. Then you close up the feet to have them in a flying position. Then you place the shield onto the back right here, and then you fold up the handle of the buster rifle, which then connects onto the front of the shield right here. 
And just like that, we have the bird mode, which takes the cheapest hex transformation of the wing Gundam and really tries to make it as complex as it can. I mean, seriously, the best RG kit can do for it is give us that really cool wrist joint that turns and then this complicated knee. The rest of the process is still quite primitive. I mean, I'll say the same thing I said in my HG review, that I don't think anyone actually buys the Wing Gundam for the transformation other than children, and even children will see through this as a cheap trick right away. So the RG tries its best, but you know, lipstick on a pig and all that. And here is a quick side by side with the HG bird mode in case you were curious. They don't look that radically different, and the smaller wings on the HG doesn't seem to affect the looks of it much at all. To be honest, they both look perfectly nice, and if you really do like the bird mode somehow, they are both really good renditions of it, which is actually really high praise for the HG kit if you think about it. But then, the RG designers just wouldn't leave well enough alone, and they added this thing here which they were too ashamed to name. No seriously, this eagle thing doesn't have a name. In fact, it doesn't even have instructions. Seriously, I thought I was mistaken, but they were so embarrassed with this idea, they didn't even want to teach you how to do the transformation. But I'm not letting them get away so easily. So, first we're gonna take the legs, and we rotate them back towards the front like this. And then we adjust the arms and the claws a little bit to make them look like they're in motion rather than locked in place. And then we turn the shield down so it looks like a head on a neck. And then we fan the wings out fully. And that gives us the more bird mode, or whatever they might call it, of the Wing Gundam, which is every bit as stupid as it looks right here. I mean, really, I'm not gonna mince my words right here, it's pretty stupid. I mean, not even Bandai wants you to try this. This is what kids do with their toys when they've gotten bored with it and they just invent their own things out of it. And I don't have to tell you that people online have already made fun of this a whole ton. With the kid in hand, the final verdict from me is, yes, it deserves all that ridicule. Uh, but you know what I think this is? And I kinda hope someone at Bandai watches this, but you know, of course they won't. I think some executive or some important person was checking the prototype and they accidentally made this, and he thought it was really cool and he was really proud of himself, so he just then made the people under him put it in as a thing. And you know why I think that? Because I went back in time and I made the HG kit worse by doing this. Yes, the HG kit is perfectly capable of doing this as well, so there's absolutely no extra engineering needed. I mean, I'm sorry HG Wing Gundam, you don't deserve this, but the people need to know. The lack of instructions and it not having a proper name has to be signs of very unwilling designers that were forced to do this against their wishes. Which brings me to a bigger tinfoil hat conspiracy here, and you know, indulge me for a little bit. I think this kit has a bit of a troubled development behind its closed doors, what with the simplified structure and all the emissions and this eagle thing. And that in, they actually announced the real great high new Gundam even before this poor kit was out, which they never do with any other RG kit. So I'm personally quite convinced either that this is a sign of some corporate infighting or Bandai just sucks at being Bandai. Let me know what you think or if you think I'm nuts or something. Okay, crazy tangent aside, we get a couple of hands here with this kit with the closed fist here and the holding hands and the open palms and then one trigger finger. The closed fists are rare on HG kits, but they're more common on RG and MG lines. So some people really prefer these hands without the big gaping holes on them, and these ones here look just fine. The holding hands are the default for nearly all kits, and we've already seen their slit that can hold the beam saber. And again, these are nice sculpts and they work perfectly fine. The open palms are always great for posing, and the ones here are again nicely sculpted, as we'd expect from an RG kit. The trigger finger hand is for the right hand, and the index finger is actually raised a little bit, which we can better see if we bring in the holding hand here for a side by side. This is fine too, and overall the hands just don't have anything particularly wrong or notable about them really. For the articulation, starting from the top, the head looks upwards this much, and downwards only a little bit. And it turns side to side until the head hits the collars, though if you move it a little bit it does turn a full circle. The shoulder joint can swing out this much. And the arms can swing outwards this much. The arm can rotate a full circle as long as you move the wings out of the way. And this entire outer section of the chest can swing out on an arm for some very extreme reach across the chest. The forearms can rotate a full circle. 
and the elbow can bend a whole lot, but the claws block its full bend. The hands can be adjusted on their ball joint, and they can rotate around a full circle. The waist bends forward this much, and it doesn't really bend backwards at all. And if we don't lift the waist up, it only turns a bit to each side before being blocked by the armor. The skirt armor swings up less than you might think, but the side skirt can go up really far. The side skirt's on a pivoting arm as well. The back skirt is articulated, and it swings up this much. The legs swing outwards this much, and the entire hip lets the legs swing forward a little bit like this. The legs can kick forward, but the skirt blocks it from going up to 90 degrees. You can fudge it a bit and have the kick go further up. And they kick backwards this much. Then the knee joint folds up this much. But there's an extra unlocking hinge here which lets the leg fold up to a full 180 degrees. The feet swing up this much. And they swing backwards this much. There's also a toe bend that's used for the transformation. And they swing side to side this much. And as a footnote, the entire wing assembly can be adjusted a little bit here, and the thrusters here can also move. This little bit on the back skirt here can also swing out unhinged, but it's not clear exactly what this is supposed to do. Maybe it's more a sign of a troubled development, maybe? The front skirt limits the legs, and that's a rare flaw that we don't often see on RG kits, but otherwise, the kit poses just fine, and it's gonna do everything you're gonna want it to do. The joints have some friction to them, so they tend to jump and stutter rather than slide smoothly, so it can be a bit hard to do small adjustments, but really, that's nothing new to the RG line. Couple with the new wings, this kit is very expressive, and the range of articulation works nicely with the level of detail of the kit to look great on display. For size comparisons, here's the entry grade RX78 once again, and here's our upper end benchmark, the high grade new Gundam. The RG Wing Gundam is exactly as tall as the RX78, even though it's supposed to be quite a bit shorter. The new Gundam continues to tower over the two by a whole lot, as we'd expect. The Wing Gundam is taller than it should be, but if you didn't know that, it won't really look out of place on display with all your other 1144 kits. And before we wrap up, of course we have to see the Wing Gundam alongside the other Operation Meteor Gundams released so far in HG. I imagine a lot of people want the RG Gundam to replace their HG one, so this is what's gonna look like. I won't say it's the best match ever, and the dense detail on it can look out of place, especially if it stands next to the Heavy Arms, which has the least details in the group. So the RG kit here will look slightly out of place unless you paint everything in detail. But surprisingly, the extra height isn't really that noticeable when you put them together like this. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Bandai Rio Grade 1144 Wing Gundam. Number 1, it's an RG on the outside. There's no question the Wing Gundam looks as great as an RG kit should, with the frame providing details throughout the kit, and that same modular division of the outer armor. But it's also true that the inner mechanism is simpler than many other RG kits. The lack of a cockpit and the omissions of sliding panels and the mock hydraulics and the interlocking frame sections are all just hard to ignore. I mean, I'm not saying that RG kits must have all these things, but it's still curious that the Wing Gundam made all these cuts without any obvious benefits or cost savings. You know, or cost savings that are passed on to us anyway. And number two, it has a divisive design. Not many RG kits have split fans as much as the Wing Gundam has, from the fanned out wings to the suspiciously nameless other bird form, to the new proportions which turn out to be the fault of new long legs. While I understand either side for liking or not liking these changes, all these alterations to the Wing Gundam turned out to be a huge gamble without very clear rewards for Bandai. But of course, if you happen to like these changes, then you're going to be really happy with this kit. And number 3, it's not the definitive version of the Wing Gundam. Again, I don't mean this kit is outright bad or somehow it isn't worthy of being an RG kit, but for MSS like the new Gundam and Asazabi, you almost only see people posting photos of them buying RG kits and very rarely of the HG counterparts nowadays. The value and aesthetic propositions for those two kits are very clear. While the HG kits aren't entirely obsolete, 
those RG kits hold very clear advantages that many fans seem to prefer. Now, going back to the Wing Gundam, I'm not so sure I can so handily tell you that it replaces the HG kit. Yeah, I know the HG Wing Gundam is a lot younger than the new and the Zaza BHG kits, but still, it's 8 years old now, and it only has half the budget as the RG to work with. And I'm not so sure I can so clearly tell you that the RG kit gives you twice as much enjoyment as the HG kit. I mean, it does nearly everything better than the HG version, but there isn't really much that we don't already get on the HG, maybe other than the opening wings. I mean, it's not us being spoiled. This is what Bandai markets to us, and they're not afraid to charge us the extra money for it, so you're gonna have to see if the RG Gundam is really worth that extra cost for you. So that's a review of the RG Wing Gundam, a much anticipated kit that can go from wonderful to unoffensive to downright flawed depending on who you ask. So hopefully this has helped you decide where you fall for this kit and if this will be your next model purchase. Thank you so much for watching. Come check us out on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects. Links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos like the review of the high grade Wing Gundam that you saw earlier. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.